Welcome back, everyone. I'm Ryan, and this is Chesser. And we're here ready to watch the final match here between Tuskers and Afterlife. Uh, you know, the spirit's fleeting and the boar is cornered. Let's see what they got. So, Afterlife, uh, and I'm just legit shocked by this, Double Paladin Fleet Typhoon, Oniero's, Magus, Pontifex, Double Manicor, Double Nemesis, and Tusker's bringing what, Goran? Oh, the uh, Tusker's are bringing a Bargus, Double Fleet Foon, Oniero's, Nosai, Purifier, Purifier Hound, and Double Curer. So, um, we'll see how this plays out, and, um, we'll, I mean... Double Paladin again. I mean, that's a ballsy I, move. We'll I, I know. I, I don't like that very much. Uh, it seems that Tuskers is actually going with a mixed bag of missile ships. Uh, RLML. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. Excuse me. RLML across the entire squad of their three battleship backbone. So the question is, is are they going to be able, be, be able to apply enough damage straight off the go? It looks like they're trying to headshot the Lodgy of Afterlife. If they can kill it straight up before the first reload, this is going to be huge for Tuskers. But their Bargus is getting wrecked. Yeah, I mean, it, the Bargust is being bent over backwards like a piece of scrap metal here. It's clawing back armor, but, uh, you know, it's not meant to be an armor ship, really. It's more meant to be a shield skirmish ship. So to see it kind of be in this situation, it's really, really, really scary. But uh, it looks like it's paying off for them because the Aneros is dropping there on Rep the Afterlife Rep drones are all over the Aneros. Oh, He's there it goes. Oh, oh, Aneros is down. And you know what? Afterlife has not been able to capitalize and kill this Bargas. It is holding extremely low shield. I mean, excuse me, extremely low armor, armor Bargas, of course, and uh, I was this really surprised. Really I didn't know if the Bargas would be able to stand against that, but it looks like the Paladins right now are going to be in a heap of trouble. Tusker is very quickly moving on to the support wing now, taking those nemesis off the field. Wow, Afterlife huge. is switching to the Fleet fight Typhoon applied by Anuka. Uh, try to see if they can switch off to catch the uh, uh, their, their Lodgy napping, but it uh, looks like he's got reps coming into it, so... Uh, Definitely a much more tough nut to crack than the Bargast in armor, that's for sure. Uh, most definitely. The issue is with Afterlife is they are not able to put really any pressure on the Oneros. And provided that he doesn't boundary himself this time, I think they're looking at a pretty good position here. This first Paladin looking very weak. It's going to go down shortly. I cannot believe Afterlife brought three Paladin setups in a row against Tuskers. I mean, you need to respect Tuskers a lot more than that. Yeah, that, I mean, as uh, Moderator said yesterday, it's kind of disrespectful to think that, you know, Fool me once, shame on you, but you're clearly getting to the point where you just you're just banging your head into a wall inspecting a different result. Yeah, I I really really like Tuskers and their setup here with a full RLML comp, armor comp, Bargast and Typhoons. Your first initial shots, that first big alpha that you have, another mana core down for Afterlife, that first big alpha that you have, you really want to make it count because once you start reloading, once you start letting the match get on, the effectiveness of RLMLs, sometimes you kind of lose that punch off those huge 35 second reloads. Mm -hmm. But taking and headshotting the Lodgy immediately of uh, Lightbender well, on Afterlife and, and, and was development, huge. And the Neros on the Tusker side has gone down. Uh, we'll see if that makes a huge difference at this point. I mean, they might switch back to the Bargus because it was holding up barely before, but with that Paladin by Head Kender uh, down, that's a huge chunk of their DPS gone. Yeah, you know, I, I think right now it's a really big mistake for Afterlife to start focusing on Typhoons, although that Fleet Typhoon is just melting again very quickly. Uh, I would be focusing more on the Purifier. That's a lot of damage coming in on the battleships, but if they drop this Fleet Typhoon this quickly, wow, this is actually surprising. Its armor just evaporated. Yeah, it looks like the Oneros was really the linchpin on how that thing was staying alive. But uh, yeah, Fleet Typhoon by uh, uh, I can't see because uh, there's a UI issue, but uh, uh, Anuka going down, uh, and, and it here looks we like, are. It looks like they're focusing on a Bargus now. Yeah, yeah. Damage yeah. primary is Bargus, uh, which is very interesting. Um, now, I think that's going to drop pretty quickly here because Bargus are not really meant to be armor tank ships, although we have seen them like flex tanked into armor setups recently. Exodus has run it before, and Tuskers as as well. Uh, if this Paladin with its self rep, which it's looking actually okay, kills the Bargus, I don't think that Tuskers has the DPS to break this last Paladin. Well, but that may question, be the case, can it, but can it, it be doesn't matter. I mean, the, the problem at this point is that uh, Tuskers have a third, uh, a 25 point lead, so even if they do break that, I mean, it's still going to be... True. Oh, Paladin yeah. down now. Yeah, that's that's not good. It may 
have been a better idea to kind of focus down these purifiers and hounds. I'm going to be curious at the end of the match when we look at damage, how much damage these bombers, which were completely left unmolested the entire time to just rain DPS down on these three battleship core, uh, how much damage they're actually going to be doing here. Um, I think maybe the Vargas was the wrong call in that situation. Yeah, these purifiers and hounds have just been left completely on their own to just do as they will, and they've en enacted their will on the other team. They are just raining torpedoes onto Faffy Waffy there. Um, basically, probably regretting a lot of things right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. Afterlife looked really strong, but I think at this point when the pressure really gets on, and I know that the desk, uh, Fozzie and Moderator were talking about it, when you have these high pressure situations where it's match after match after match against the same team. You need to have all these ships ready. You need to have game plans ready. You need to have depth. You need to be able to be ready to move in and out of different choices. If you can't match up to it, you're going to get taken out. Yep. And as we see, uh, not even a full halfway mark, barely to the halfway mark, and the match is over. So we'll hand it back to the uh, analysis desk. Uh, good luck to the Tuskers. They advance, and uh, we'll see you next time. Tuskers able to bore their way through the afterlife, uh, just just destroying that fleet. Those those paladins un, unable to to make a third appearance work for them. Uh, some of that going to be the changes to the fleet comp. Some of it just going to be Tuskers tremendous piloting, excellent target calling, uh, a, a really good show from their logi. I, I'm I'm impressed. I'm not tremendously surprised to see them do so well. Maybe to see them do it so quickly. Afterlife, that's shocking to me that you that you'd bring the the third the third appearance that comp in a row. Fozzy, tell me about you that. You don't have a ton of time between matches. I I think this was a mistake on their part. Both bringing it again for the third time and also telegraphing that you're going to bring it with Oof. those bands. Those bands screamed Paladin, and so Tuskers knew that they had a decent chance of coming up against this. They knew what they were going to be facing, and uh, they were prepared for it. They knew exactly what to do. Yeah, uh, serious, yeah. serious showing, yeah. Tuskers. Uh, moderator, what did you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to highlight the Tuskers, so what they did was they immediately tried to force a Logi trade, and they did that. They got tackle on the Oneiros, which is what they absolutely needed to do with that heavy comp to win, and they did so. They got the newts on it, shut down some of the hardeners, shut down the prop mod, and then they got the webs and the paints on it to slow it down to allow the missiles to apply. Once they did that, they just chewed through the support, and from there on out, a handful of paladins, yeah, it can do a lot, it can be kind of scary, but they were ahead, and they just carried the, it the rest of the way home. Yeah, the paladins obviously yeah. worked really well as a surprise setup. Um, not as great against a team that is prepared for them, that knows what they're facing, that has had like 20 minutes to think about how to beat it, uh, and uh, has shown they can beat it before. So Afterlife is going to go down to the elimination bracket, uh, and we're going to see Tuskers versus Pandemic Legion in the winner's bracket finals. Tuskers, like PL, has now guaranteed themselves at least seven of each prize Yep, trip. seven cruisers, seven frigates. Mm -hmm. uh, the damage for that fight that we just saw coming up on your screen now, uh, so you can see uh, Tuskers' mm -hmm. dominant... Uh, ah! I actually damage dealt, uh, dom dominant, uh, recovering from damage dealt. Actually, uh, they deal less than Afterlife does. They just do it more effectively. Yeah, and they just were able to uh, to keep their ships alive. They were whenever they were dealing damage, they were killing things. It, and while Afterlife wasn't finishing them off. Yeah. Can we talk about the armor bar guest? The the mm -hmm. arm arm guest. Yeah, we've seen them a couple of times uh, here. Um, they I'm so used to seeing that ship in a in a shield comp though to see it yeah. brought here and to see it plugged into that uh, that typhoon setup. <laughs> 
I, I mean, really, really interesting, I think, as a sub yeah. in for, for the ships that they couldn't bring. Not something you see a ton in normal combat in EVE, um, but here in the tournament, mid slots matter so much. Mid slots are extremely important because you can really optimize your EW. Uh, you have a bunch of pilots that have practice together that uh, know their plan really well, and uh, you can actually use all these, like the extra webs and grapplers, um, extra E-War, uh, really, really effectively. And one other piece of E-War you can mm -hmm. really use effectively is that the Bar Guest has a bonus to scram uh, mm -hmm. strength, so, or Range. how optimal, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. you can use a Tech 2 mm -hmm. scram, and that will hit out almost as far as like a faction scram on any other ship, so. That's a nice uh, bit of screen you can do to keep yourself uh, just outside of a uh, scram range of someone else just being like, keep away from a little kid. Yeah, especially yeah. powerful against other battleships. Genuinely yeah. effective in this match, mm -hmm. which sees Afterlife go down into the elimination bracket as uh, Tuskers moves forward to face Pandemic Legion in the mm -hmm. next uh, next undefeated bracket. We have the schedule, of course, uh, for next weekend uh, to deliver. Before we break for today, uh, PFR, uh, Phoebe Freeport Republic, will go up against Exodus, and the winner of that match will face We Form Volta uh, uh, in the in the <laughs> in this just grueling.